Hello, I'm Arthur. Welcome to my lab. In previous video, I showed you how you can use your old cell phone as a signal generator. So this again is my very old cell phone and I have this app called Dual Channel Function Generate Generator running on a, on this phone and I showed some features of this generator. So let's see what we can do using this function generator. Uh, my phone is plugged into a cable going to a connector and we'll connect it to oscilloscope and start generating a signal so I'm just hooking up my oscilloscope probe to the connection coming out of the phone and let's enable the output and we're getting a frequency let's actually go to a 10 Hertz frequency uh oh the battery is low on this phone um, hopefully I have enough time to record this video and I guess as a bonus I'll show you how I charge the battery on this phone because this phone um, the the charging circuit in this phone is broken so the battery is not charging so I just plug in this phone into my uh, power supply and that's how I charge the battery so anyway I thought I switched to oh, I'm I must be using the wrong channel uh, let's switch to this one let's see do we have channel one Square wave. All right, this is looking good. Okay, we have square wave signal. Let's adjust the amplitude. Go to the maximum, 100% amplitude. All right, so we have 2.2 volt uh, peak to peak at 10 hertz. And let's adjust the trigger. There's actually quite a bit of noise on this line. Let's turn off second channel. And there's a quite a bit of noise on the trigger input. That's why it doesn't really want to trigger too nice. See, this is probably just the analog output of, of the phone causing this. You could probably feed this signal uh, through something like 7.4 LS14, I think, is the the uh, chip that's, that has a Schmidt trigger on the input and clean this up. Also some, some other filter, but it looks like the, um, the edges aren't that clean. But that's okay. That's good enough for our purposes because we'll use a slow frequency anyway. So let's zoom back out. So this is the frequency that we have coming out of the signal generator. And now let's hook it up to a resistor and capacitor. And there are many videos online, so I'm not going to go in depth on this. There are many videos on how to measure a capacitor using an oscilloscope. So you can watch those to see the details, but basically you connect a square wave out of a signal generator to a capacitor through a resistor and then based on the curve the charge and discharge curve you can determine the value of the capacitor and this is the tricky part getting this hooked up but okay it worked so the red wire is connection from my signal generator from my cell phone on the oscilloscope we can see the charging curve what used to be uh, a lot of noise on the edge now turned into just a charging curve so the first measurement that we want to do is display the cursor 
switch to voltage mode and measure the amplitude of the full charge and discharge of this capacitor. And that is 2.2 .2 volts. Now we need to figure out what 62% of this is, or I'm, I'm sorry, 63%. So 2.2 .2 times 0 0.63 is 1.86 volt. So now I'm going to lower my upper marker to 1.86 mark, or I'm sorry, 1.3 eight six so on my scope at this readout that will be one point three either eight or four zero my scope goes in increments of two so I'll go with one point three eight that's close enough so we'll be measuring now the time that it takes this I'm going to change slope to, to the rising. Uh, we're going to measure the time that it takes this capacitor to charge up to 63% of its capacity. And I'm moving my waveform to where my waveform intersects with this line here. This is my reference line. Now I'm going to switch my cursor to time mode and measure the time between this intersection right here and the beginning of the curve. And this is about 1.528 millisecond. 1.528. Now the formula for this is the time in milliseconds, or the time, divided by resistance of the resistor. And my resistor is one and a half kilo ohms. So let's take 0 0.001528 divided by 1500 is 1 to the power of minus 6 or 1 microfarad. This is a 1 microfarad capacitor. I'll show you that. Hopefully you can you can see this. 1 microfarad. So if you have an unknown, unmarked capacitor and you need to measure it, you don't even need a function generator, a standalone device, you can use your cell phone. The caveat, of course, is that you also need an oscilloscope, which is the more expensive piece of equipment, but at least you don't have to spend the money on the um, signal generator. Okay, so now I've uh, reassemble my circuit with an inductor and again there are many videos showing how to uh, measure an inductor so let's actually make a measurement of of the inductor you need two capacitors and the inductor and you need to know the value of this capacitor here connected in parallel with the inductor so I'm still outputting my 10 Hertz square wave I'm sending it to my scope and there's some uh, noise in the measurement in the signal, but you can cl clearly see this ringing waveform, and this is a nice screenshot, nice capture of this waveform. So now, based on this waveform and the uh, capacitance of the capacitor, uh, we can figure out what the inductance of the inductor is. And I may actually need to uh, measure that capacitor just to verify its value. So I might do the, the same measurement that you've just seen um, for this capacitor. But first, let's measure the frequency of this uh, waveform. 
So I'm going to move this waveform to where it's more convenient to measure the frequency. Use my cursors to measure the time. I'm going to go from this peak to this and that's 24.75 kilohertz is the frequency. Okay, so I'm back to my capacitance measurement circuit and I have my charging curve. I had to change the resistor and to measure this new capacitor because it's a much smaller value of capacitance so I need to use much bigger resistor and again I've switched to voltage measurement mode and now I'm measuring 1.9 volts so that's the first measurement that you need to make and 1.9 times 0 0.63 is 1.197 so I need to lower my marker to 1.1 1.2 is the closest rounded number and I'm going to move my my waveform to intersect with let's make it this second line this line right here and then I'm switching to my time mode measure the time between this Let's see, voltage, I was a little bit off here, time, and we have one millisecond. And let's double check the resistor. The resistor is 1.1.5 mega ohm. So, one millisecond, 0 0.001 divided by 1500000 is 666 picofarads. That's the capacitor value as measured uh, in this configuration. 666 picofarad. So now, um, based on this value and the frequency that we've measured previously, we can determine what the value of the inductor is. So we've measured the uh, inductor, we've measured the capacitor, and now let's take a look at the math. The frequency of the waveform that we've measured for the inductor was 24.75 kilohertz, and that's, that can probably be rounded to 25 kilohertz because uh, uh, th these precisions, that is really close enough. The capacitance was 666 picofarad, and the formula to calculate the inductance is this 1 over 2 pi frequency squared uh, multiplied by capacitance so 1 over 2 times 314 for pi times 24.75 kilohertz or 24750 in in hertz times 666 to the power uh, to times 10 to the power of minus 10 or minus 12 um, this turns out to be 0 0.062 and the value is in Henry's. So 0 0.062 Henry's or 62 millihenry's.